Hey, Wacko Bob here with another uh, video for you here. This is one of two videos I'm going to be doing um, uh, tonight. And, um, um, this one has to do with um, the day the music died and the debate of the coin flip. Now, I know that um, a lot of people have, uh, have uh, talked about this. It's been on YouTube. And, you know, I only found out, you know, only about a month ago what really, uh, what was supposed to have really happened with this uh, coin flip. I, however, want to uh, say that, um, you know, for starters, I wasn't even, I'm only 39 years old. I was born in 1974, so I wasn't alive the day the music died with Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper. But I do have... Um, some scenarios and the way I was uh, finally piecing this thing together I really wanted to if I could with my radio show I would get the uh, the people who are still alive today that were there on that day in uh, in 1959 of uh, February uh, third second or third I believe it was still February 2nd they didn't take off until till uh, it was uh, almost midnight from what I remember I've heard different stories where that goes to, but that's not the important thing here. I want to talk more about what happened that night. And um, a lot of things really come to mind here with this one here. Um, number one, really, what, you know, who, who really had the coin flip? Uh, whose story is true? Um, you know, is Dion DiMucci's story true, or is Tommy Alsop's story true? Now, Tommy Alsop's story seems to be the popular story. It's the one that makes sense here. But there are some red flags we should really look at here in the way stories are told. And I'm not saying either one are lying. You know, but there are a scenario, and I think the final scenario could be the best scenario, too. And I know I'll probably get a lot of people that will disagree with me here on this. So be it. I'm not saying any of it is true at all, but, uh, uh, you know, to really dive into this, um, whose story makes the most sense? I mean, you know, that's the question. Who's, whose story makes the most sense, you know? I mean, it wasn't until, until 50 years later that we would start hearing the story from Dion DiMucci about his version of the coin flip that happened between him and Richie Valens. And you also got um, Tommy Alsop, who's been going with the story for a while and everything. But to go to the beginning of this one here, there were two, you know, they, you know there, were, there was a converted school bus that they were on, which is the worst thing you can have if you're going on tour. It doesn't even have to be winter. If anyone's ever been on a school bus or a converted school bus, it had to be absolute hell. They didn't have the tour buses they have today. They prob I take that back. You know what? They probably did. But, uh, you know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, to really bring this, uh, bring this point across is, you know, that they were on this bus, you know, and the bus kept breaking down. They were running late to two events. And, you know, Buddy Holly decided to charter a plane. Now, there are two stories here. One was said for Buddy Holly and his band, since it was his band that was pretty much backing all the artists that were on this tour, which was the Big Bopper, it was, it was uh, Richie Valens, it was uh, Dion DiMucci, or Dion he was simply known as, and, um, and uh, you know, that, that, that's what it was, you know, and they say that Holly chartered the plane for, uh, for um, Will and Jennings and Tommy Alsup and uh, and uh, you know and himself. Well, I do believe this. You know, the one bottom line you could say is he definitely chartered the plane for himself. And uh, you know, another story came out that he was going to do this mainly with the headliners. Everyone could pay pay thirty six bucks a pop. You know that thirty six dollars fifty years later is probably like four or five hundred dollars now for all we know. But then again, I really don't know, because um, would it really cost four to five hundred dollars again to a Beechcraft Bonanza? That's number one. But, uh, you know, that's also neither here nor there. But, uh, you know, here's the thing. You know, they've, of course, got their different stories. Uh, you know, 
Dion DiMucci says that uh, he won the coin toss but gave up the, the, his seat to Richie Valens because of the cost. I also think because Richie Valens did have uh, was uh, battling a cold that probably could have been a flu at that point. Um, that might have been true. Um, to, to, to get more into this, I love it when my mind scrambles up all of a sudden. <laughs> but uh, to, 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 to really get into this and to really get to the point, whose story is true? <sighs> Uh, you know, like I said, those red flags are out there. You know, the first one you really have to look at is is, is uh, the Big Bopper. You know, I, you know, the Big Bopper said, you know, that um, said that, uh, or or Will and Jennings said that the Big Bopper was it was the only the flu was perspiring profusely. The story was said so many different ways, but Will and Jennings pretty much did give up his seat to the Big Bopper, and he said if it was all right with Buddy, it was all right with him. You know, that sort of thing. That point is true. I kind of believe that, but I also don't believe it, too. For all you know, the Big Bopper may have been automatic for it because he was sick. You know, Buddy Holly, he could have been thinking of the headliners. He really could have been because it was, because the one point Dion DiMucci makes is it's the headliners who are making the money. Tommy Alsup, Will and Jennings, they were pretty much paid off by Buddy Holly, I'm sure. For with the uh, part of the money he was making, so so you know he could have he Buddy Holly Buddy Holly could have very easily gone to to Richie Valens, the Big Bopper, and D, and Dion in this one. There th there's a point there that's actually believable where that goes. Um, however, however, the story was never again. You were talking about something that wasn't said till. 50 years later. Now, to get to the point of this whole matter, um, um, the movie La Bamba probably was the only thing that um, really said that uh, Holly was charting a plane, and the reference was made by the actor who was playing the Big Bopper that we'll, we'll, take, to, we'll take only the headliners. The Big Bopper, the character, is talking to Lou Diamond Phillips, who was Richie Valens at that time and uh says that only the headliners will be going will be going on this one so there aren't many seats so it's time to get your rear and gear type of thing so a reference was made to only the headliners being on this chartered plane in the movie La Bamba but however that seems to be the only one and this w and this is something that was said 28 years after the 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 crash and everything However, I will also say this, the movie La Bamba also makes a point of the coin flip between Richie Valens and Tommy Alsup. So there's a little bit of a conflict there where that one goes. Which one's true? I think that there, that there, that there, there is something that can be said there with that one. Um, you know, so, so, you know, I think maybe the, the uh, people who, uh, who wrote La Bamba and directed it kind of did it, you know, to keep that, number one, to keep that sort of conflict there, but I think that they've heard the stories in the past. The other thing is, Tommy Alsup has been going by this story for so many years, Waylon Jennings was too, and uh, there, there's a lot to be said where that goes. Now, if I can jump, jump back uh, a moment here, I go back to... I go back to, again, the deal of the chartered plane. VH1's Behind the Music uh, says that uh, after the drummer who, uh, Carl Bunch, you know, his feet got frostbite and they sent him to uh, the hospital that was there and he, and uh, they went back on tour and Buddy Holly then was talking about charting a plane for him and his bandmates. That point was said on uh, the VH1 Behind the Music. However... The people that were there in the surf ball ballroom, the Carol Andersons of the world, I forget the guy who ultimately, the DJ who ultimately became a uh, news anchorman, I, I, I forget his name, but um, I, no, no one really made reference to the coin flip or anything like that that happened between Tommy Alsup and Richie Valens. And there really isn't anyone making reference to the coin flip where Dion and Buddy go.
but you know this this whole thing you know is real big you know and uh you know there there are those things you know why did it take 50 years for um Dion to talk it's it's really hard to say it really is i mean you know i i got to say this i got to tell you that this is the one scenario i could really come up with cuz both stories to an extent could be true you know buddy holly they say was the nicest guy in the world he got along with everyone i believe that and i don't think buddy holly was meaning any harm but for all we know he may buddy holly could have been burning the candle at both ends with this whole chartered plane he may have been talking to richie valens the big bopper and dion about this he also may have been talking to uh talking to his own bandmates about this too that he had with him what he would want to do for them and he could have very easily been, been uh, burning the candle at both ends because if you really look at the grand uh, the grand scheme of things here uh, you know he could have said one thing something to one and something to another and could have easily put it in big bopper and richie valens ears and everything at the same time too that they wanted it since they were pretty much going to go on the plane by then because they both had the flu for all you know Dion may be telling the truth there and then you know you know and uh, you know that that's where how that whole thing went and you know he could have arranged it to where him and the big bopper fooled real well and Jennings and even Tommy also up at that point you know you know Richie and I also believe you know Richie Valens always had a fear of flying. And they said up until up by that point he had overcome that fear, but uh, how do you know? How do you know? Richie may have been willing to give up his seat to Tommy Allsup, and they still decided to flip a coin. Richie Valens may have been that guy that was more on the fence, but Buddy Holly could have easily been plant burning the candle at both ends. The one thing in this argument, and I've heard Tommy Allsup speak about this, is. God must have put some, uh, you know, uh, or the devil must have put some lies and lies in my soul and everything for me to have uh, stood by this story for 50 years. Let's look at this here too. Let's look at this here too, because he makes a reference to why was it that they saw three identific or four identifications to pe people in there, you know, Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, the Big Bopper, J.P. Richardson, and Tommy Allsup. Now, just so people know, Tommy Allsup didn't have to be going on the plane to uh, to uh, have to have Buddy Holly do a favor to uh, send a letter, Western Union or whatever, to to um, his family, or or so or do whatever you know, just to send that letter. But uh, I got I gotta say. He could have just as easily given him his wallet to get his ID and everything right there. He could have just as easily done that right there saying, will you just do me this favor? And he may have ne never gone on the bus. I mean, you know, you don't have to be going or on the plane. You don't have to be going on the plane flying with Buddy Holly to have him do that favor for you. You know, you know say, well, I was expecting it, but we're doing it this way. So, I mean, you know, let's look at this for what it is. That didn't need to happen. The other thing that needs to uh, be said here, too, is, uh, in, in all this is, why hasn't anyone talked to Dion DiMucci to make reference to this, to get his side of things, so they could try to get something accurate in the books that were written, the movies that were done? Why wasn't more reference made to Dion DiMucci? I think Dion and the Belmonts were probably just as big if maybe slightly bigger than Richie Valens if Richie Valens came out four months so uh, earlier and his career was a year long instead of eight months long then it probably would have been the other way around I think you would have seen both versions of Donna go to number one the single version with the Richie just Richie Valens and the guitar and then the studio version La Bamba would have definitely been number one and you probably would have seen a re-release of Come On, Let's Go. And We Belong Together would have also been a big hit. You know, to bring this thing home and everything, what do I believe? I believe the, the scenario I gave you, 
for all we know, Buddy Holly could have been uh, burning the candle at both ends. And whoever was going to go on the plane was going to go on the plane. Either way, they were going to be fooled. But what do I believe? I don't know. Most people believe Tommy Alsup. Um, I'm I'm more in the light to believe Tommy Alsup. But um, again, I don't know for sure. I know I am friends with uh, Dion DeMucci's sister. Donna, and um, I got to tell you, I don't know, but it does make for a lot of talk. I don't think, I'm not calling Dion a liar, I'm not calling Tommy Alsop a liar, but it does make for a major discussion here, and I think, <laughs> I think it's one, one that uh, really can be talked about and can be debated, but think about this. Did, was Buddy, Buddy Holly on, on February 2nd burning the candle at both ends that night with his band, and the headliners. That's something to think about. Thanks for listening. I'll be back in a little while with, a, uh, with another uh, video on the uh, Miami Dolphins uh, crisis. Thank you very much.